Hey guys and welcome back. So in this video I'm going to go over this nice website called Flow Algo. And this website is basically meant to be used as a tool to help us traders get an idea of what the so-called smart money is doing in the stock market. And by us knowing what the smart money is doing in the stock market, we can kind of, you know, forecast a little bit better what the future direction of a stock is going to be. Now the website again that I'm talking about is called Flow Algo and this is basically what it looks like whenever you're first on the home page. And basically what they do, again, is they track down smart money. Uh, they track down smart money transactions. And then basically the transactions that you see coming in on the, on the dashboard are going to be transactions coming in in real time as they're placed. And um, again, smart money basically refers to the big buyers in the market, right? So this is going to be like institutions. This is going to be, you know, hedge funds, high net worth traders, large firms. So these are, you know, institutions or people that are not just investing, you know, a few thousand dollars or, you know, small amounts of money like us retail traders do. These these uh, institutions, they are trading with, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Right. So the idea here is that you want to be aware of when they are placing these trades, because a lot of the times they tend to be correct about the direction of price. For example, if we see, you know, a lot of call sweeps coming in, which sweeps, if you guys want to take a look at the definition, it's basically orders that are sent in with urgency, um, but they try to stay under the radar by splitting these orders across multiple exchanges. So Flow Algo is able to recognize these and show them to us on the dashboard once we are logged in and everything. And I'll show you guys that in just a second. But they basically are able to do this for us. So we're able to, you know, realize when this happens in real time. And again, if these uh, if these institutions or, you know, high net worth traders, if they're pouring so much money into these specific stocks or betting so much money into, you know, calls or puts, whatever, you know, it, it must be for a reason because, you know, you know, nobody's really going to bet, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars into a security unless they've done the research and you know they have the conviction behind placing that trade behind placing that bet right and you know a lot of the times these these traders once again they tend to be correct about the direction of price because they do tend to have more access to you know different tools that allows them to do more research on these companies that they are betting their money on now this uh flow algo uh website is a subscription-based website so you do have to pay they have different plans and they do have a weekly or a two week trial for $37 if you guys want to try it out. I'm not affiliated with them or anything. I just think it is a pretty big game changer when it comes to trading options and even when it comes to trading stocks because again, it allows you to see what the smart money is doing and sort of piggyback off of their trades. Not necessarily taking on every single one of their trades, but you know, using them for conviction when we're looking at our trades. And I'll show you guys an example of what I mean. But basically, again, you do have to pay some money for this. So it's about $1,200 a year. But again, in my opinion, I do think it's worth it. And it is a tool that I've been using for quite a while now. I know how to use it. I know what to look out for. Because um, again, there are going to be a lot of things that you're going to be seeing with this tool. There are going to be a lot that you're going to have access to a lot of information. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you just want to take on the trades that you see coming in. There are other, you know, factors or variables to look out for. And um, this is something you kind of learn with experience and time. And, you know, going through the platform, there's a lot of learning material as well. Let me just go ahead and log in real quick and show you guys everything. Okay, so this is basically what the dashboard looks like. And just a quick, you know, run through of the dashboard. You know, this is what it's going to look like when you first log in. And you have all these different tabs that you could click on. Uh, so this is the main dashboard and then from the main dashboard you can basically see the flow sentiment for the whole market which is overall bullish for today as i'm filming this video the put to call ratio is 0 0.466 which basically means that for each call there was 0.466 puts being placed so there was more calls and puts being placed um, and then here we can see the calls definitely outweigh the puts uh, there was 123,000 versus 265,000. And then here we can see the real-time option flow. So as I'm filming this video, the market is closed. 
so we're not going to see you know any more flow coming in but basically if you were if you were on this page as the market was open you would be seeing all these different orders coming in and you basically have the ticker symbol the expiration date that the order came in the strike you know um, the premium so the, the total premium into this trade and then um, you can see you know the details all that stuff you know if you guys do want to look into it uh, they do have you know what everything means I think it's either on this learn tab or on this help tab but you can see what everything means and then they have the type of order so whether it was a sweep a block or a split and then it kind of gives you a score based on like flow algos like algorithm or something like it gives you a score as far as you know how meaningful this trade is so typically uh, the, the the kind of trades that you want to look out for are going to be sweeps because those are the ones that are you know a little bit more aggressive and they do mean a little bit more than the other ones so that's kind of what you want to look out for if you do start using this platform again th there's kind of a lot of things and variables to look for and if you're part of my discord group chat i do send out trade ideas you know every once in a while based on what i see on the flow so for example if i see that you know a certain stock is showing a lot of bullish flow i'll take a look at it and then take a look at the chart and then see if you know things align as far as you know if we could get a good entry with a good risk to reward if it does align with the chart as well as the flow, it's just going to give me that extra conviction to get on a trade. For example, today with uh, Kodak, I did notice that Kodak was uh, showing a lot of bullish flow. So basically, if you were to search up a certain ticker symbol, it's going to show you the stats for just the ticker symbol itself. So if you didn't have anything searched here, this is the whole market. But then if you, you know, if you actually zoom into a certain to a certain name like kodak we're going to be able to see you know how kodak performs so kodak was actually super bullish today kodak uh, flow sentiment is 100 percent bullish and basically we see that we do see a bunch of you know block splits sweeps all that stuff and these are all considered uh, unusual orders because whoever was placing these trades they had a lot of conviction behind this trade you know saying that you know they they were very confident that Kodak was going to go up in the short term. Not only is there zero days to expiration now, um, but there, uh, these orders were at the time they were placed, they were out of the money. They had a strike. This one had a uh, $10 strike when uh, when uh, Kodak was trading at $9.14. When it was trading at $9.26, they had a $10 strike. And notice how they they're coming in, you know, one after the other. So if we were to compare this type of order flow and the um, you know the time span in which these orders were placed with the chart on think or swim we would see that it does make quite sense to use this kind of information as sort of an indication to maybe enter a trade or if you were already looking at a trade you can use this again as you know that extra confirmation right so let's say we weren't even looking at kodak today but we were looking at the um at the option flow and then we see that these unusual calls start coming in for kodak so then we take a look at the Kodak uh, chart on Thinkorswim and we're like, okay, let's take a look at it. Let's see what's going on. Again, this is at 1017. All right, so we're here on Thinkorswim and we have pulled up the chart for Kodak. And basically, first I'm actually going to apply my intraday charting setup. And basically, here with Kodak, so we start seeing the first orders come in at around, what do we say, like 1015, 1020. So this is around this, uh, around 10, 15, 10, 20. So when Kodak was around this area right here, right? So when Kodak was around this area, we saw those first orders come in, but we can also see that around this area is where we have this pivot. And we can also see that this pivot aligns with the pre-market highs. So at that point, you know, would it make sense to automatically just because we see that order come in to get in long on Kodak? Not necessarily, right? Because we're seeing that there are some technicals that are not really aligning with that with that um, with that trade. Now, if we see that maybe it breaks above and it starts to you know continue to grind higher, then maybe we can actually at that point decide to go long. Otherwise, then we gotta wait to see if maybe we can see a pullback, and at that point we can still look to get in as long as the pullback is not too drastic and as long as the chart is still looking bullish. But at that point, we're even going to be getting a better entry than what we saw on Flow Algos. So it's basically like a, a point of time in which, you know, being patient kind of pays off. And um, at that point, you know, we can also see that 
when it reached around this area, it sort of just started consolidating. So if you actually waited until this consolidation pattern kind of ended and it started to reclaim a direction, at that point it would make a little bit more sense to get in. We can also see that we have some technical support here at around 8, 808, 810, something like that. So we have this technical support over here. And we can see it never really pulled back to this technical support, but we did see that, you know, when it reached this uh, this area and when it was consolidating, it kind of did pull back a little bit. But then from there, it kind of found support right here. And then that's when it kind of started grinding higher. And then at that point, I do believe we started to see some more bullish flow come in. So going back on flow algo, we can see at... 144 and then 328 and 333 we saw some more sweeps coming in we see that we had a strike which was out of the money and then these other ones coming out 328 and 333 had a 12 dollars strike which is even more out of the money so these are very aggressive and these are definitely pointing something out these are definitely something that if you see coming in you definitely want to uh you know consider you know why these are coming in and see if you can find some sort of opportunity so again i'm going to go back to the chart we kind of started seeing that at 144, it started to make its way back, breaking above the pivot once again, and then finally using it as support and also using these uh, EMAs as support as well on its way up until finally breaking high of day. And the last ones we saw at 328 and 333, that's when we really started to see that the chart really started to pick up, right? That's when we really started to see momentum, you know, start to build up and then Kodak just really started shooting up. So again, depending on your trading strategy, depending on your plan, you may have wanted to get in, you know, as it was consolidating, as it was pulling back maybe to the to the VWAP, maybe you waited until it pulled back to this level where we can see there's a little bit of support. Maybe you wanted to wait until it broke above the pivot and then it made a new high of day. You know, depending on where you want to get in, you may have, you know, have lost out on a little bit of profit or made a little bit more profit. But regardless, this would have been a pretty successful trade, especially if you were trading the option. Now, if you were trading the exact contract that they were buying up, which was the uh, 918 expiration uh, $10 strike calls, then um, you would have made a really, really nice profit. And we can actually look at the chart for that specific contract. Okay, so let's compare the two. And let's just say we got in at when uh, Kodak kind of pulled back uh, to the to this uh, level of support right here. Um, if we got in at this point, and let's just say we went long on Kodak shares. Let's say we felt like the option was a little bit too risky. Let's say we don't trade options. Let's say we don't know how to trade options. So we want to stick, you know, solely to shares. Again, flow algo is giving you option flow. But again, if we're seeing really bullish option flow, we can use that information to go long on the equity so if we went long on kodak when it was trading at 878 which was around 12 30 p.m eastern time right so let's just say that's where we went long and then we took that all the way up until let's just say the end of the day so we got we, we so we were really patient we waited until the end of the day we got pretty lucky on this trade uh and then essentially you know we got a really good entry and then we we pretty much caught the peak when we sold so if we were to, you know, have made this trade right here, that would have meant that we made about a 24%, which is really good. It's not bad at all for a day trade. 24% return on a uh, on a day trade is not bad at all, especially if we're talking about equity. But now if we're comparing the option, and again, this is the exact option that they were sweeping, and then we're talking about getting in at the same exact time. So we said that we were looking to get in around 1230, right? So you get in, let's just say you get in on your contracts at around uh, 22 cents. So this is going to be $22. And we're going to see how much profit we would have made if we uh, sold at the end of the day. So if we sold at the peak at the end of the day at around 1, let's just say we sold at 130, right? That would have been approximately a 500% return on our investment, meaning that your initial $22 investment would have turned into $130. And then if you bought a hundred of those contracts, then you know you can only do the math at that point, right? So if you bought a hundred contracts, that would be $2,200 initial investment. And then at the end, you would be sitting 
with uh, $13,000. So just do the math right there. That's over $10,000 uh, profit in one day if you would have invested about $2,200 into this trade. Now, realistically, being that this is a very close expiration that we're playing and this is a volatile stock, you know, the amount of profit that we would be looking at by the end of this trade, once everything is said and done, probably wouldn't be as much because realistically, we would have probably locked in some profits as we started seeing that our position was going in our favor, right? So we would start trimming some of our position as it went up a little bit and then a little bit more as it kept going up and then we trimmed a little bit more as it went up even more as it's becoming super overextended to the upside because we can definitely see that price was overextended by the end of the day right that's very clear to see so realistically we would have probably locked in profits just in case that you know we did start to see that it went down just as fast as it went up which is something very common with volatile stocks like kodak which is not necessarily a stock that we would normally play options on but again if we do see the opportunity you know why not especially I mean this is what's considered a lotto play so you wouldn't want to put that much money into it you would kind of have to understand that whatever amount of money you're putting in you know you could be and you could end up taking a loss because this is a riskier play and I'll go more in detail in another video but at the same time you know there's the potential there we're seeing the you know the bullish option flow coming in and that's also going to play a role in this uh, move having even more follow through so obviously we do see that this uh, this particular trade was very successful again i don't think realistically i would have been able to hold until the end of the day i would have had to lock in some profits at you know at, at, at least like four times throughout that that big move that we see right there right so so realistically, by the end of the day, I would be holding like one fourth and then I would probably close it out or maybe even, you know, see how it opens up on Friday. But still, you, you guys get the idea. You know, this was a very successful trade example. Um, if you guys do want to see more videos on uh, option flow, you know, the different things that I look at um, and just videos in general regarding options or stocks, just make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit that like button. Let me know that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, make sure to comment them down below and I'll see you guys on the next one.